have been a complete fraud this whole time. Because my wife has been making me delicious meals on this crooked cutting board right here, and I have not had the time to make her a decent one. We gotta get some Purple Heart, maybe some Osage Orange, and we're gonna slap together some beautiful cutting boards. Hickory or ash, not really sure. This looks to be some cherry. Maybe walnut, we'll have to see. All righty. Home from work, just paid a ridiculous amount of money for this Purple Heart and this Paduke, $118 to be exact for two boards. Never done that before. We got some pine two by six right here. We got Hickory, we got Paduke, and we got Purple Heart. And we're gonna, no, 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 I'm just kidding. We're not actually gonna use pine two by six in this. And I actually think that I wanna go with all closed grain wood. So I have some hard maple right here, Paduke, Purple Heart, and cherry is probably what we're gonna go with to make sure we have a nice closed grain so juices don't get all down in these cutting boards when all is said and done. We're gonna start by spending some time over here at the miter saw station, and then we will move over to the milling where we'll do some jointing and planing, getting everything nice and square, and then we will move over to the table saw and the clamps where we will clamp and then cut and clamp and cut and clamp and cut, something like that. <laughs> Pretty sure I cut up like a dollar worth of wood in that eighth inch cut right there. It pains me a little bit. Got everything broken down as you can see behind me right here. Not really sure how many cutting boards I have, but I think I have at least four tucked away in here. We're gonna mill everything down now, taking off as little material as we can. I'm not really going for any specific thickness. I'm just trying not to turn my $100 boards into sawdust. This is the first time I've ever worked with Purple Heart, and it is some cool stuff. Very, very dense and very oily, and you can see that here on the dry portion being much more purple than where I just milled. As you can see behind me there, everything nice and squared up, and now we need to rip, rip, rip on the table saw, and we want to make sure we have a good blade in there. This is a Amana ripping glue line blade. We can slap this in the table saw and go to town. It was quite the experience to have all these different species of wood and push them through the blade one after another. They felt very different. It was quite interesting that Paduke, while being a very hard wood, cut very easily compared to some of the others. Similar to Walnut, it's a hard wood but very easy to work with. I wasn't really after anything in particular while laying out the pattern orientation of these cutting boards, just wanted something somewhat symmetrical and pleasing to the eye. On the one board that was a gradient from Paduke, Purple Heart, Walnut, Maple, that's a dark to light transition. I did want to make sure we had that one that way because I think it's going to look super cool. Now I already know what this looks like and by golly did it turn out awesome and not what I was expecting at all. But we'll chat about that when we get there. Right now we're just clamping everything together and then we're going to cut some of it apart again when it's time to do the end grain. I did have to go get myself another gallon of Type Bond 3 to complete this project. Do you necessarily need that? No. Type Bond 2 is water resistant and food safe, but Type Bond 3 is just a little bit better. And like with everything, do it right or don't do it at all in the DIY Tyler shop. Out of the clamps over here and we are ready to go into the planer. I'm just going to try to scrape off some of the thickest glue and then we'll go through the planer, flatten everything out, and then we'll choose which ones we want to go with end grain. And I do think for sure this one because I think this will give a super crazy pattern. And after that it's totally random.
We have now pretty much finished up a whole bunch of side grain cutting boards. To do the end grain, we need to cross cut, and for that I'm going to be changing to a different blade, which is a combination blade, which is a little bit better for cross cutting these thick pieces of wood. I am going to be using my cross cut sled to make sure everything is safe, make a first cut to keep everything square, and then I will slide that up against the fence. Notice the unisaw fence that I have can slide back so that I don't have any pinching problems once the blade is released from the piece. I can just run my pieces right through and they will go to the end of the table where I will stack them up. And imagine that we are ready to glue the pieces we just cut back together again, but we're going to rotate them 90 degrees so that the end grain is up and down versus side to side. And as you can see, I am also flipping them, I don't know, horizontally in the plane to give us a sweet pattern in these cutting boards. This is a totally random pattern, although it is uniform across the board. And while that glue is drying, a quick word from our sponsor. This is the first time starting this up all year. One benefit of no gas starts every time. This cutting board video has been brought to us by Greenworks Outdoor Power Tools, whose tools I'm using to trim the lawn while I am smoking some chicken, and it's looking fantastic. One of the things I really love about Greenworks, they're quiet, they start up even though winter has just ended. That was the first time I powered this thing up, and I can quickly get right back to work without having to yank on the pull cord a whole bunch of times. Link to Greenworks Power Tools down in the description below. Drum sander is about to earn its keep. Now you could put an end grain cutting board through a planer if you take super shallow cuts and if you're kind of willing to sacrifice your last board or put another board on there to, to accept the tear out because you will probably get tear out on the edges. But got a drum sander, I'm gonna put a heavy grip belt on there and we're gonna make some passes and work our way up to a higher grit until we get to the random orbit sander. It is now time for a little bit of finesse. We are going to square up the boards over at the table saw using the crosscut sled, which is perfectly perpendicular to the table saw blade, giving us a perfectly square cutting board. Cutting one side and flipping it over to cut the other one. Once that is done, we are going to add a very slight round over using a portable trim router, and this is just to break that edge over so that it is not sharp and won't chip so easily. It is very dense wood, so I found it was best to go with shallow passes at first and then take the full pass and even reverse direction. We're then going to use the oscillating belt sander to knock off that corner, and then we are going to spend quite a bit of time with the random orbit sander because this is end grain, it takes quite some time. We do want to add a grease slot or grease groove in these and I am using the Izzy Track Guide on my fast cap safe cut ruler, links to all this stuff down in the description below, to manage to try to keep this groove straight. It took me a little bit of time to figure out exactly how to do this, but in the end it worked out pretty well. And we want to make sure we add a handle so that it is easy to pick up these boards which are fairly heavy. And I'm doing that over at the router table where I have some stop blocks set up that are relatively uniform between all the cutting boards. And then I'm just going to run between each side and get a perfect slot. For the finish, I'm going to be using some cutting board finish I got from Amazon. It's got some carnauba wax, beeswax, mineral oil, and some other good stuff that is obviously food safe. And this is awesome. It is like painting color with one swipe across all of these boards. Beautiful. I can watch this over and over again, just soaking up how all of that color changes immediately when the oil is applied. Okay, sorry about that. Not sure exactly what happened, but now we are gonna wipe off that oil so that it is dry to the touch because that stuff is pretty oily. Good for your hands, actually. And these are the results right here. And look at that gradient cutting board. I did not think that that cherry to ash transition was going to look 
so good. I think that one might be my favorite cutting board, and I actually gave that one to my mother-in-law, and she was very, very thankful. Added some dishwasher safe feet, although I don't know why you would put this whole thing in the dishwasher, and we are ready to go. Eat it. Wife put it yes. right to action in her kitchen. Her favorite is actually one of the thinner boards because it is easier for her to move around the kitchen.